lithium is forecast to grow 20% or so per year. That's five to seven times GDP. So the investment thesis is high, mar high sustainable margins in a mega trend, which is, you know, as we go from 2% penetration to 30% penetration, I see a 10 to 15 year mega trend or longer. And uh, companies that are developing new deposits have significant upside and those who are currently producing should grow two and three and four times over the next kind of three, five, seven years. As a market leader, Albemarle is well positioned to benefit from the long-term secular growth of the lithium industry. The question I have in terms of, for viewers, this is a show about six to 24 month time frame in terms of investment. Where would you put your money in this space over that medium term time frame? Almoral stock has grew from 50 or 60 to 140 in, around this time last year, but it's fallen back to $85. But sentiment drove there's when they were at a dollar 140, their even EBITDA multiple was something like 20, whereas mm -hmm. historically mm -hmm. it was more like 15 or so. So there's a lot of sentiment and risk on. Um, into commodities, into lithium, partly the Trump uh, tax reform expectation, deregulation, and a lot of that went away in much of last year. So there was a lot of negative headwinds, which has brought Albemarle uh, down. We have access to diverse low cost resources in various geographies, including Australia, Chile, and the US. We are vertically integrated with experience in extracting and burning lithium from multiple types of geological deposits. Our technical expertise provides the ability to provide a wide variety of products today and help our customers and customers' customers develop next generation materials. The near term outlook remains uncertain given the recent economic downturn related to COVID-19 and the inventory build that has occurred in the channel, but we are seeing green shoots. Automotive OEM production is largely back online. European EV sales have been strong year to get date and getting stronger as each month has passed recently, supported by regulatory changes to address climate change. And EV sales in China and the US are rebounding from low rates of earlier this year. The better part of the last decade, Almol has had a comprehensive effort to closely monitor lithium resource landscape and analyze many complex considerations. As noted here on the left-hand side in bullet form, there are really three key drivers that determine technical and economic viability. The first is grade, the second is size, and the third and importantly is chemistry. Each resource is different, and so one has to tailor the technology or know of a technology or possess a technology that can be used to convert that lithium to high-quality battery-grade materials and manage the associated impurities. A large high-grade resource with no infrastructure and no rule of law is going to be a challenge. A smaller resource with good infrastructure and access to low-cost energy could be very successful. We've broken this down into three different uh, rows, if you will, uh, that represent spodumen, and then you have brine, and then you have clay. Darker filled in blocks, and those represent the established, mature, demonstrated chemical processes. So with spodumen, you see that in the dark blue. With, since you'll notice that table includes not only economic figures of merit, uh, but the last two in particular really highlight some of the sustainability attributes that we want to keep in front of us. Let's take a look at spodumen in the, in the top row here. This by far is the, the preferred route or the most uh, prevalent route today to get to lithium hydroxide. We put all of these on a, a common lithium hydroxide um, parity point. So all of these processes were driving to lithium hydroxide for this comparison. The, the challenge with clays generally is, as we mentioned previously, that they tend to be more dilute um, in concentration naturally. So you do have to do quite a bit more work in, in getting the, the lithium concentrated. And in the process, you're carrying a lot more tailings and byproducts that you have to need to, you need to address. Uh, so that hits you on your cost, it hits you on your capital. Um, and I think the thing that you really need to keep an eye on uh, when you have to do more work potentially to get access to that, how much energy you're using and how much water, fresh water in particular, are you using to get access to those materials? 
thought the question was specifically about clay is particularly challenged with the amount of energy that it's taking uh, to recover those materials and, and the water intensity, the fresh water intensity. Um, so that's that's the basis for which you're seeing, you know, uh, double to triple minuses relative to the reference state. So we're talking about things that in some instances are, are at least 50%, if not 2x, um, out of step with what we would say is world class today. So there's opportunity, of course, for innovation and improvements. Uh, it, it's starting from a pretty challenged position because uh, just by the nature of the, the clay materials, the amount of work, as we talked about before, uh, the potential amount of uh, chemistry that you have to do to get those two battery grade products is 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 a lot. Uh, a lot more heavy lifting than you, when you would compare it to a uh, spodumen type resource. As we look at the world and we look at the U.S. and we look at the, the, the emerging trend for a lot of reasons, which politically we could discuss, around um, localization of supply chains. As the market grows and as the economics warrant, we would look at bringing Kings Mountain to the market. That is the best resource, spodumene resource in North America. It has a concentration, it's the highest concentration, so a little over 1.3% lithium oxide concentration. And we've spent tens of millions of dollars, uh, in excess of $30 million over the past couple of years, going back and, re and, re and reconfirming all the information I've given to you. So, to Clay's, for us, Clays are a lower concentration resource. What we would be looking for, and this is part of our uh, efforts in the industry, part of our, uh, we have collaborations that, I, that are confidential, I can't speak to in the industry. We have technology efforts we're doing. We will look at whether know-how, technology, can overcome resource deficiency. There's yet another factor that could come into play if we extrapolate out to three terawatt hours for Tesla alone by 2030, you're gonna need those clay resources at that point. Now come at a lot higher cost, therefore selling prices will have to be a lot higher to support investment in it than they are today. Today's selling prices aren't even sufficient to support nearly all the resources that are in play already. So they're gonna to have to be, as a lower quality resources price will have to be significantly higher to support that. But the market migration of pricing, the, if you will, said from a, a, a cost curve standpoint, the higher marginal, the movement of marginal cash costs even higher than the six to seven dollars we say it is today, uh, will be necessary to bring that supply in, into the market. Barring technology innovation, so we're very focused on that as well. And and I think you know that uh, from their pronouncement, Tesla is, is doing the same. Uh, they, they view that technology as being the key there. So there's more work to go. Conceptual at this point, lot to be proven. But we're very engaged in that uh, pursuit. Vertical integration by the OEMs. Obviously, then they sort of cut out the sort of profit margin component on the conversion steps. How do you how do you adapt to that? There, there aren't many examples in sort of the chemical industrial world where backward integration has been sustained. It's hard for me to imagine it's pervasive. If I can understand wanting to do it to secure supply, I can understand wanting to do it because you don't feel there's enough coming to market or you feel it's gonna give you a competitive advantage. But you're right, I mean, it does erase the margin. So it doesn't change the cash cost of production or marginal cash cost of production. But it obviously now a Tesla doing it is going to look at their entire profit in the channel to justify return on entire investment as opposed to the return that the way we look at it, which is the difference between our cost and our selling price. And so when you think about uh, slide nine, is this kind of perspective tied to conventional electricity prices or a normalized electricity price? Or did you also try and adjust for electricity differences in electricity prices in regions and different scenarios? When we're talking about energy, Electricity is certainly a component, and you know that's as as you mentioned. If you're running a pump or or um, another process that, that depends on uh, electrons, but uh, really a larger component of your energy many times is heat. Uh, as we talked about, you know the need to heat or to to open up your resource to get access to the materials. So it, it's more than just electricity. So some in instances it's about your cost of natural gas, and certainly you know that's you can you can factor that into your analysis and you should depending on which region of the world you're you're considering on 
important brine extraction in the U.S. We'll spend a lot of time and effort uh, looking at the smack over brine. The challenge there comes to one of chemistry. Uh, it, it, it's, it's kind of like clays. You can say there's an abundance of lithium there. Um, but that isn't the whole answer. That's the challenge is, is that, that it varies. It, it can be variable. The, the, the level of concentration can be variable. Uh, and the further challenge is the presence of all these impurities, which are significant in the case of, of oil field brine. So it's possible with chemistry and technology, technological innovation and a, and, a, and, a, and a selling price that supports that kind of investment that it could make sense. But to date, relative to all the other things we're looking at, we would prioritize that down. And we have access, right? Because we, we, we operate our bromine business in those brines. Um, we'd prioritize that down the, the list for those reasons. What's your sense of the probabilities on a five or 10 year horizon that, that the industry could deliver something that would be a dislocation rather than just a incremental move down the learning curve? I think they're relatively low. I mean, I think in the next five to 10, maybe seven years, just to pick a number, there are some technologies that if proven effective, um, could be disruptive and enabling. Uh, electrodialysis is one, right? Um, it, it's, it's what Namaska attempted. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done there.